So we've talked about vectors and what vectors are and how a vector is just a quantity that has both a magnitude and a direction. And because of that, we represent vectors visually as arrows, you know, something like this or, you know, it could point any direction. It could be some other arrow that points like this has a different length, meaning it has a different magnitude and also may have a different direction. But to really talk about vectors, we need to choose a coordinate system. And so there's actually a rule that goes in choosing what coordinate system we use. So the coordinate systems that we use are right-handed coordinate systems. So what does this mean? Well, I've, I've actually gone ahead and done a little drawing to, to help illustrate this, literally. So here it is. This is a hand that I drew. Um, I know what you're thinking. This is like the most amazing masterpiece that you've ever seen. And I, I thought the same thing after I'd finished drawing it. But anyhow, this is supposed to be a right hand in, in case that's not obvious. And um, this, this right hand shows us what a right-handed coordinate system is. And, and so as a side note, there are a lot of times um, in physics where um, you're going to be using your right hand to do what we call right hand rules of making your right hand do some shape or some maneuver to, to help you visualize what's going on. So you'll get used to doing like a couple of these different tricks with your right hand. But here, here's one of the first ones. So this is for choosing a coordinate system and to just keep in mind um, where, where the axes are supposed to point. So to do this, you just point your thumb straight up. You can like start with a fist and um, have your thumb pointing straight up, giving like a thumbs up then point your pointer finger oh, straight away from you so you've got like a capital L shape between your pointer finger and thumb and then take your middle finger and point it straight away from your palm and so all of your fingers should be at 90 degree angles to each other and the point of this is to give the directions of the positive axes of a right-handed coordinate system right so these are the axes. So your thumb is pointing in the direction. When you, when you make this shape, your thumb is pointing in the direction of the positive x-axis. Your pointer finger is pointing in the direction of the positive y-axis. And your middle finger is pointing in the direction of the positive z-axis. So to sort of represent this a little more, um, you know, without, without with less pictorially like this, um, this is really what we're going for. So this is a 3D right-handed coordinate system. And you know it's a right-handed coordinate system just because if you make this shape with your right hand, you can sort of tw uh, twist your hand around uh, via your wrist until you get it so that your middle finger is pointing as the positive Z axis here and your pointer finger is pointing as the positive Y and your thumb is pointing as the positive X axis. So that's what we mean by a right-handed coordinate system. We mean that you can make this shape with your right hand with your fingers representing these positive the directions of these positive axes. Um, and uh, so that, that's all a right-handed coordinate system is. And all the coordinate systems that we're going to be using um, are going to be right-handed coordinate systems. So that also brings me to another point that I that I would like to make, which is that oftentimes, you know, we think that we're you know only working in 2D, and so a lot of times we might have you know you might just draw a coordinate system that looks something like this, you know, where this is one axis, this is another, and then you say, oh, this is my positive y axis. Whoop, let me stop drawing straight lines. This is my positive y. Let me actually draw a y, positive y. And then this is my positive x axis, right? And so, you know, it looks like we're only working in 2D, and a lot of times we only are working in 2D, and so it's kind of helpful to draw this. But keep in mind that this is actually a right-handed coordinate system, and so there actually is a positive z-axis. And so um, to represent that, um, I first need to talk about uh, just a little notation just for a sec. So when you have a vector that's pointing uh, into the page... And, and you kind of have to get used to thinking of vectors in 3D, but if you have a vector that's pointing into the page, we represent it as a circle with a little cross like this, a little crosshair. And if we have a vector whoop, like that, so this is into, this is into the page. And if we have a vector that's coming directly out of the page, we represent it as a circle with a little dot.
And the idea behind this notation is that if you imagine a vector and you imagine it as literally being an arrow, um, the back end are going to be the feathers. And so if it, the vector is going into the page, it's going away from you and all you see are the feathers of the vector. So that's why we have this little X in a circle. And if the vector is coming out of the page, it's coming right at you and all you see is the tip of the arrowhead. So that's why it's a dot like this. So anyhow, to relate this back to the to a coordinate system where you think you know you're only working in 2D there actually is a positive z direction and a z axis and you know so a negative z uh, direction of course as well um, and so I kind of want to leave it to you I'll, I'll ask you a question and of course I'll answer it but from this coordinate system right um, which direction is the positive z axis and the trick to answering this question is to use that right hand rule that I just that we just talked about so um, I'm assuming that you've, you know, t taken your right hand or maybe visually done it. But the positive z-axis here points out of the page, right? So, um, whoop, let me, so it points out of the page like this. So this is the direction of the positive z-axis. And you just get that by using that right hand rule. So that's a that's kind of a point that I want to make is that a lot of times you think you're only working in 2D but there actually is a, a third axis oftentimes the Z axis that is that is going on um, in, in your problem and another thing that I want to point out too is that even when you only draw the positive X and positive Y directions like this even that is still following the right hand rule that I just described up above um, because if you make that right hand rule shape um, even if you ignore your middle finger, this coordinate system is still following that rule of the thumb pointing in the direction of the positive x-axis and the pointer finger pointing in the direction of the positive y-axis. Um, and so I want to do a little, just a, a little more practice with this. And the reason why is because whenever you start working on a problem in, in physics, whenever you are, whenever the problem involves vectors, the first thing that you want to do is draw a coordinate system. Just pick a coordinate system. Once you pick it, then stick with it the entire way throughout the problem. So, um, and you always want to pick a right-handed coordinate system. So, let's say that you picked a coordinate system and you decided to do the following with it. So there's sometimes where this is useful. So, let's just do a quick example with this. So, this is you've decided to pick that this is going to be your positive y-axis direction and then this is going to be your positive x-axis direction. And um, I'm just going to do example one here. So where is the, where's the positive z-axis pointing? Well, again, it's out of the page, right? So, um, and again, you just get that by making that, that right that right hand rule, um, that right hand rule shape. Um, and again, this is just a right hand a right-handed coordinate system as all of the coordinate systems that we use are. And I'll just do a second example just to kind of hammer this home. Um, so let's say that you had a coordinate system and you decided to, um, let's see, you made it so that, right, you did something like this. And let's let's draw it here. And let's say for the sake of um, let's say that you made this the positive z axis, right? And then you made this the positive, what? The positive y axis, right? So now tell me which direction the positive x axis is in. And doing, doing the right hand rule above, you again get that it's out of the page. The positive x-axis in this problem is out of the page. So I just want to emphasize that when you're doing a problem, always start by picking a coordinate system. Always draw these axes. You don't have to draw the, the third dimension, the one going into or out of the page, um, if the problem doesn't require it. But I just want to keep it, you, you know, it's important to keep in mind that even when you only draw the, you know, like an X or Y axis, you're only talking about a coordinate system in two dimensions, it's still following the, that right hand rule. You're just ignoring one of the fingers of that right hand rule, even if it's only 2D. So anyway, and you, and you can always rotate your coordinate system, you know, you can take your right hand and um, 
swivel it about your wrist and you know you can so that's why you can rotate the coordinate system you can do pretty much anything you want with the coordinate system you pick for your problem you just have to keep in mind that that coordinate system has to still obey the right hand rule because we always are working with right-handed coordinate systems